The bullpen is the only mafia news station. Something new about how your life is going to be controlled. The Twitter files was a, was a perfect example of that. This whole business of AI now and who controls AI is really um, is the is the potentially the future dictator of this country, maybe the dictator of the world. I mean, if, if AI gets out of hand, then you're not going to be able to live your life the way you want to live your life. And and if they and if you say, well, you know, to hell with it, I'm just going to do what I want. Who knows what they'll be able to do to you? Maybe eliminate you like they did in Nazi Germany, maybe like they do in the Soviet Union or they did in the Soviet Union. So it's a it's a an, it's a problem that needs to be exploited in terms of the public needs to know about it. And quite frankly, guys, I'm happy that I heard this because I had never heard of this before. And um, and now I'll be on the lookout for these, uh, you know, for stories like this and for the things that need to be addressed as far as, um, you know, the way that we live our lives. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that America will will devolve into something like this. But, um, you know, after after living in Biden's three years of of his administration, the regime is a perfect name for it, in my opinion. And, um, you know, with and it's the other thing that that really bothers me is the small number of people who are able to control the Democratic Party right now um, in terms of of where they go and how they, they 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 what laws they put out, what regulations they put out, their ability to you know to defy the Supreme Court is is just amazing to me. And it's a small group of people, but they're loud as hell. And um, and that's what really is 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 a frightening thing. And they got a guy who's 80 years old who doesn't really give a shit. He's he's going to die in in a couple of years, so he doesn't care. He's going to live his life the way he wants to live it now. And um, you know, and and the hell with the rest of you. So it's a very very scary proposition. And thank you, Doc, uh, Jay, for for bringing that to my attention and to the people who are listening to us because I'm sure that not a lot of people have heard of this before. So um, it's it. it it's just unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah, yep, I agree. Well, I heard it was about three days. So if there was something where the banks got shut down, you can't get your money, you can't buy your medicines, you can't buy formula for your baby, diapers, anything. It's I heard it's a 72-hour period. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, that people, there will be mass panic. There will be um, the revolts in the street, as Sammy was saying, and, and breaking into other people's home for that food and water to survive. Um, it's really scary to think about. Hey, Sammy, we, we, you and I both grew up in Brooklyn at the, around the same time. We've lived through a couple of blackouts. And you can see what, how society really got down to the lowest level during those blackouts. The people who rioted, people who, who went into stores and just simply looted the stores, didn't give a shit about their, their fellow citizens. And, um, and it was a very, very scary proposition. Thank God it didn't last that long. Uh, you know, that the, the, the electricity came back uh, in time for society to still at least be able to recover. But I can remember when I was working in the DA's office and there were the, the I guess there were the 77 riots um, when there were, there were there were no jail cells. There were so many people in jail and we had to work sometimes around the clock to do arraignments, to getting these people to, you know, into the courthouse and, and, and get them out. But that's an example of what could possibly happen with a situation like this. And let me point out that in China, it did happen during COVID. They shut everything down. They locked people in their homes. People couldn't get out to eat food. They couldn't get out to the banks. They couldn't go to work. So if that's what is potentially coming in the United States, somebody has to do something about it. And Sammy, you're correct. There will yeah. be a revolution. My, Michael, I, I, I agree 100%. And I could see nothing but a revolution because, you know, if when you take everything away like that, people will be fighting for food. You know, you saw all these old movies and it's not, you know, people say that's a movie. That's not going to happen. What happened in Venezuela is not going to happen. What happened in China is not going to happen. We're dumb. When you hear this guy give a speech, I heard Kamala Harris give a speech saying, you know, she said, I'm trying to get it exact. She said, um, we're going to have electric cars and windmills 
and we're going to reduce the population so everybody could breathe better and have better water. And people were applauding her. Yeah. They were clapping. Now, my question is, when you say you're going to reduce the population, I know how the mafia would reduce the population. How are you going to reduce the population? It, uh, pandemics? Killing people? And then this makes the mafia, again, look like Boy Scouts. Because when you do put out a pandemic, if, you're, if that's your theory and that's what you're going to do, because they're already talking about another one. And if that's what you're going to do, then you're talking about men, innocent men, old men, young men, every nationality, every race, uh, women, children. Nothing means nothing to these people. Nothing. Nothing. You're correct. I mean, it is incredible. So when it gets down to the point where it hits everybody, like we're talking about, and everybody seems to lose their freedom and understand well, we are becoming Venezuela, or, or maybe worse. I've seen pictures of Venezuela where trucks are pulling up with food. People are running out of their houses with buckets to get food. Yeah, This was one of the richest countries on the planet. They had so much oil, yep. and, and it happened. So when people think this won't happen to us, or I'm a Democrat, because the Democrats seem to be behind most of it, I don't say all of it, and I say a lot of Republicans are floating over to that because they're the rich elite as well. So they We're probably not. figure if this happens, it's not going to hurt me. Right, right. We need we need someone to speak up, and that's one of the things the Republicans aren't doing. There's enough of them who don't voice their opinion, who don't have the, the guts to stand up and say no. You know, that's that's really irks me because, you know, my family, believe it or not, Italian Americans from my, my grandparents came over from Naples. My parents lived here, grown up here, but they were all Republicans. It's a strange thing because, you know, at that time, everybody that I knew were Democrats. And so were the people who, you know, who my family knew. But but my family was Republican. So it irks me to see these Republicans standing by and saying nothing, you know, like this guy McConnell, who's supposed to be the leader of the Republicans. The yeah. guy said, does nothing, says nothing. He just allows it to go along. And you hit it right on the head, Sam. That's because he's one of the elite. And that's the party that counts. Not the Democrat, not the Republican. It's the elites. And uh, right. and, and that's why we're in trouble. Yep, yep. And that's why we have so many problems with racism, gay stuff, all kinds of things. Those to me are, you know, confusion. Give some, give the public something else to think about and talk about, and they won't watch what we're doing. Right. I mean, this was typically a mafia thing on a very, very small, tiny level. You know, we would always do something else, and at the same time, we're we're you know pillaging and taking down money from different industries in different ways, but not like this. No. I mean, I have never seen anything like this. I never heard of anything like this. And for a while, I couldn't imagine it myself. I thought, ah, it's bullshit. That'll never happen here. Well, I, I've changed my mind. And me as a kid growing up, I was always a Democrat. Because the Democrats I knew personally were yeah, illegitimate. I, exactly. So listen, the Republicans, the conservatives, they wanted to make laws and put you in jail and stop crime. So I didn't like them. I was on the other side who wanted yeah. to get payoffs and, and, and make moves. And then I went to a, 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 an independent. Then I went to a Republican. And then I went back to being an independent. I don't care what party you belong to. If you're doing the right thing, I'm behind you. I don't care if you're white, you're black, you're Hispanic. I don't even care if you're Italian. I give a shit less. If you're, doing, if you're Italian and you're doing the wrong thing, I'm not backing you. So I go in the, as an independent, I try to back what's right and, and doing the right thing, especially since, since I've changed my life. But I don't want to say it like because I've changed my life. Even as a gangster, I felt like that. We protected the neighborhoods. We loved the people in the neighborhoods. I never wanted to hurt the people in the neighborhoods. They were our people. We cared about them. And there's many, many stories. I saw Paul Castellano during a garbage strike telling Jimmy Brown, pick up that garbage. We'll win the strike, but get it away from hospitals and old uh, old homes, 
old people's homes and stuff like that. Pick it up. Get it away from schools. Right. And it stunned me that Paul Castellano, the boss of a family, was concerned on how we were working this strike. Not me, but the people who ran the strike, Jimmy Brown and them. And it bothered him. But these people, nothing bothers them. It doesn't bother them at all. 